feeling. taking the AMs off the NAS and they took all three of them. Um, Mom was here by herself and she uh, did a lot of, she buzz bombed them. And there's, there's Dad. He's certainly he's gonna come back. I'm guessing he's gonna come right into the NAS. So tell us again how it all went. Well, I know Ralph, you want to yeah, so, talk a little bit about the camera? Oh, yeah. So the, um, uh, all three birds were affected. Um, they had maggots in their eardrums. Um, Dr. Sarah Child Sanford was there at the hospital, and she cleared, um, cleaned them all out and um, treated them. They got fluids. Um, they were all in really good shape. Which is why, it, in part, it didn't take very long. Yeah. Like, yeah. They were able to get to work, you know, thanks to all the coordination of the crew here. Um, we were able to give her a heads up. They were ready for them right when we got there, took them in, and I think it was 45 minutes, an hour, yep. Yep. if that, 45 minutes probably. Yeah, no, the, the birds are really healthy, and I, I think that um, they uh, minimal disturbance at the nest, so yeah, we should be in good shape. Yeah. So you guys cleared some eardrums, and then you treated them with... Yeah, they, they received some just supportive fluids, Yep. Um, and then also an injection of a drug called ivermectin, which is meant to, to uh, kill parasites. Excellent. So just in case, yeah, and so the, you know, in a way, uh, you know, it's, it's just incredible to go up there and see the young birds, uh, like I kind of said, doing what young birds do, which is to say both kind of just stay still because they don't know what's going on. And you could tell M1 was like a, a, a little bit older mm -hmm. and uh, stood up mm -hmm. kind of on his, on his ankles a little bit, you know, like this, wings, wings out, out when we were out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and um, and then he continued, you know, uh, off and on, both on the transport there and back, to do some faint little red-tailed hawk screams, yeah. which, yeah. Is, which was pretty cool, because the first couple times he did it, it was like, wait a second, is there an adult around? <laughs> and um, and so to, to show up with the birds, uh, Arthur being on the nest when we showed up, mm -hmm. probably right after he brought in a, a chipmunk, um, Big Red, 
was she on the, I'm not sure if she was on the track towers or maybe she was over on Bradfield. I can't remember right when we pulled up. And then while we were up there, you know, both birds landed on the light tower right next to it. Yeah. You know, like it's just like, you know, just like they, you, you know, again, it's kind of like a, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to like over emotionalize what they might be going through, but I think I would like to, I would certainly like to believe there is some uh, awareness of the fact that we spend enough time with these birds that they don't automatically uh, view us as being something terrible. It's not necessarily they want us there, but yeah. there, there's a little bit of, I think, an understanding, which I give them credit for, you know, living in the place where they do, that they, I think, have a sense of their place and that we think they're an important part of it, or that, or that we, not necessarily that, but that we aren't trying to get in their way because yeah. they see what happens everywhere else, you know? Well, I, and I think that, you know, in the past, they have seen us take chicks away that are injured, you yep. know, and, and, and not see them necessarily come back. Last year was a wonderful exception to that with the L4's release, and I yep. think mom and dad were just totally accepting. Yeah. And, and I think it was, I mean, it was pretty amazing to see Big Red bombing you guys because she was really, yeah. you know, and yet at the same time, the turnaround was so quick that she sees her babies you know, back in the nest, and, and Arthur, who was down campus, it's like, so where's Arthur in all of this, you know what I mean, and yeah. he was up on the clock tower, and I, I, we were excited to see him, both of them, up oh, on sorry. Bradfield, on and, Bradfield then, yeah. and then circling, and then him, you know, being up on the East Tower, so. Well, I think it's also interesting, we've very seen, engaged. we've seen uh, Big Red bringing leafy material over to the nest, mm -hmm. and you know, when you think about this being essentially a parasitic infection, of a sort, you know, I don't know if that'd be the right veterinary term for it, for all, um, you know, the, it's the, the, the hypothesis that has the most support behind it for why they do that uh, during this part of the nesting cycle has to do with nest hygiene, has to do with potentially having an anti-parasitic, anti-microbial, anti-pests in the nest, so right. nest hygiene. And um, I feel like I've noticed it more this year. They might, they might, you know, I feel like our moderators and our, our viewers get the opportunity to watch this camera more than I do. Yeah. But I see, I feel like I've noticed it more this year. And um, it makes me wonder if that's, you know, this is just sort of like part of this cycle. She's been bringing in green material pretty regularly over the last week, 10 days. And, you know, she no doubt is able to see in their ears, right. you know, and see yeah. something's not normal. We see her pick at their ears, yeah. you know? And, and so it's, it's probably part of a natural cycle here. We have the opportunity to intervene on the advice of um, veterinarians, wildlife veterinarians, and also with the help of a crew on a, on a crowded holiday weekend here on campus. And thankfully the weather worked out too. Like all these things could have gone awry and by the middle of next week, I would feel much less comfortable going in to that nest and risking an early fledge. Um, unless we had clear, like really clear, you know, information that they were being severely damaged by this. So everything came together with us being able to work as a team. Rolf, incredible, um, just super calm up there. I really appreciate it. Yeah, he just awesome told me what too. to do. And uh, and we just, we, everything came together. The birds listened. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it just feels good when everything goes right. Um, so my next steps are gonna be getting the cameras back up streaming again. I'm gonna have to pop off here, but I really appreciate you guys sure. being yeah. here. And um, here's hoping we don't have to do anything else like that the rest of this year. Huh? Let's, uh, let's hope these little fledglings get out in the world and, and don't uh and don't and we don't think two things of it you know i yeah. think they're getting a meal right now yeah looks like it yep and uh mr keys is up there on the camera monitoring everything got some nice uh you know recordings or awesome yeah we're recording so, yeah. we'll see we'll see what it looks like and we'll share with you rolf and okay. if everything's yeah. Yeah, yeah. if everybody's happy about it we'll, yeah. we'll share some of that out um probably not to tomorrow though the way yeah. this weekend's gone yeah. hasn't been a lot of downtime yeah yeah Sounds good. Awesome. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Cindy. You guys rock. And so do you guys. Well, and I appreciate you guys just being uh, understanding of what everything being so last minute and what we were trying to get done and why. No, it's great. And, uh, and it's kind of a new thing for all of us to be kind of stepping in, but with the advice of, you know, one of the world's greatest wildlife health institutions on the planet, like we had an opportunity to go check it out. Yep. And we're hoping to follow this up with an article later this uh, summer, probably about parasites and red-tailed hawks and in nests in general. So 
Hopefully we'll have some more information to share for the future. So tie in a, a 90 year old article. You know yeah. What I mean? yeah, yeah, 1938 yeah. article is great. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's been a series. There's a bunch more since then. So it's yeah. it's gonna be fun to pull all that together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think uh, I just one last point. You were mentioning like nest hygiene and stuff like that. There's a lot of commentary among the mods and so forth, and yeah. and sort of evident visual evidence that Big Red was like saying, Arthur, enough of the. Enough of the carcasses. Yes. <laughs> we we got to mess her in the nest, and you know, and she's been yeah. doing a lot of cleaning yep. of I've the noticed, nest. I've noticed her like put like yeah. putting some air in the nest, you know, opening it up a yeah. little bit too. Which I think, you know, those right. kinds of larvae they want dark, wet places. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so, um, you know, that darkest, wet, wettest place during a drought might be inside a nestling's ear, and that's part of the reason maybe why we're seeing it this year is the nest uh, wasn't a great place for them to stay yep. because it was so dry. Yep. So who knows? The thing is, yep. we, for such a common bird, there's so much we don't know right in our own backyard here at Cornell that this is like an opportunity for us to learn something together. So yeah, yeah. Um, thank you guys for being here. Yep. And I'm going to get the cameras are, up for people. And the babies are good. Babies are awesome. Yeah. Yes.